Welcome back. We are continuing our quest to make an OSC controller for a virtual production stage. Hopefully you guys have been following along. Today we're going to look at sending data back to open stage control. So we set up these camera controls in the last episode, but they're nice for sort of moving things about, but not really for getting exact values. And there's no way to make it really that replicatable. So what we're going to look at today is these little boxes here, which we can have, have, make have actual values that change that we can then type a value into. So if I wanted to set it to exactly, oops, negative 90, for example, I could type that in. And we can use this now to first of all, move things around and get a exact value, but also to save them out, say presets, we could have a list of different locations that the director likes, and we can quickly type them back in to jump back to that position. So we're gonna look at how to do that today. So I'm gonna start in open stage control here, and what I'm going to do is actually save and close. So session, save, and I'm just gonna minimize it. So in our actual open stage controller, little controller here, I'm gonna hit the stop button because we need to enter this value in here. So I've already done it, but OSC port, this is the port, the input port for OSC. So we add an output port to the end of our IP address. That's where it sends to. This port here is where it receives. So I've just gone one up from our in output port, which is 37, so I'm at 38. So make sure you go ahead and enter a number into there so it'll work. Then we can hit start again. Gonna close that window and then go in here and refresh. It should just work. Perfect. Next, how do we get those little doohickeys? So in the editor, what I what it is under is it's under basic and it's under input here. So they just look like this. I'm going to show you guys, this is a really complicated setup um, and needs a lot of thinking to get it to work correctly. So what I'm gonna do is show you guys how to set this up on the rotation only. I'm gonna set it up for all the camera controls for the Gumroad version, but I'm only gonna do this tutorial on the rotation one. It is very advanced and probably as advanced as this tutorial series is going to get. But now we have our box here, what we can do is we can double click it and we can start typing away if we wish. What I need to do is change a setting and what we're going to do is we're going to go under input and where it says numeric, I'm just gonna hit true. Now we can't enter letters in. I'm hitting, you probably hear on my key. How do I, make, how do I write E? Huh. Well, I'm typing a lot of letters and E came up. <laughs> I'm getting Markiplier flashbacks now. Then numeric, if you also click it, it'll give you a little thing. It also causes, if you're on a mobile device, so an iPad or your phone, it'll actually cause a physical keypad to come up instead of a full keyboard, which is also gonna be really handy when it comes time to enter values in. What I'm also going to do is I'm gonna manually set the OSC address for this one. So this, we will be replicating this encoder underscore one. So what I'm gonna do is set the address as slash encoder underscore one. Then I'm gonna type slash value. And what this, veil, I don't know it's, um, anyone curious, that's how you spell valet, valet in Turkish is veil. <laughs> that was quite funny, value. So what this is going to mean is it's gonna save us a lot of time because we can just simply append the target value there so we don't need extra strings in our code. Now this is done, I'm gonna go ahead and save it to be sure. And then I'm going to just jump out of editor mode and we're gonna pop into Unreal. In Unreal, we're going to first need to make some edits to our BP OSC receiver here. So we've created a OSC server. Now we need an OSC client and the client is the thing that sends the messages back out. It's a bit back to the front for some reason, client sends messages, server receives messages. Sure, there is a reason for that. So I'm gonna make some room here, drag that back here, and I'm gonna search for a sequence node. Here it is. Simply so we can keep things nice and neat. Drag that maybe out a bit further. Now on the second pin, I'm gonna search for create OSC. Uh, OS, there we go. And I want create OSC client. So the client is the thing that will be sending the messages back out. For the send IP address, 
if you're on a different machine, this would be the IP address of the OSC machine. In my case, uh, I'm just gonna do 001 for the local. Now the port we set before, it was 1338. It was one above the OSC server here. And then like the OSC server, I'm gonna promote this to a variable and call it OSC client. Like, so I should keep a dictionary with me at this rate. So how do we use it? So what I'm going to do is create a similar system to what we have going here with the message received and then broadcasting that out to blueprints. Or well, I'm gonna have controller blueprints send values back into this one and this one's gonna distribute the messages. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm actually gonna make a function. So functions are nice because they're self-contained. So they, once anything saved inside them gets destroyed once the function's finished, stuff like that. Really handy if it's gonna be called possibly over the top of one already running. So I'm gonna call this one send OSC message like so. Then I'm going to start by create, well, creating the address. We need to send it somewhere. So create OSC, oh, sorry, convert. I read my notes wrong. Con there we go, convert string. There we go, convert string to OSC address. So we're sort of doing the opposite way. So I'm gonna add this string as an input to our function because obviously we want to set that differently each time so i'm going to call this one osc address now on here i then need to set the os set osc address here we go so we're going to uh, oh method oops let's try it again set osc address message address perfect so this will then add our address to an OSC message. Now we don't have an OSC message at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is drag out and click the make OSC message here. So now we have an OSC message sort of happening. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna promote it to a local variable this time, instead of a global variable. So this means once this function finishes, that variable will cease to exist. I'm gonna call this one OSC message like so. Now we need to add data to it. So I'm going to search for a add float. We go add float to OSC message here. All right, so on the float to OSC message, I'm gonna plug the message just into there. And the value I'm actually gonna plug back into our function input here. Uh, I'm gonna add some reroute nodes just to make things nice and neat and tidy. Like so, there we go. So this will then add a float to our message. This is sounding hopefully very similar because it's essentially the same thing in reverse to what we've been doing before. Then lastly, I'm gonna send the message. So I'm gonna search for send OSC. Now our function comes up, but nothing else. So I'm gonna untick context sensitive and we have here send OSC message. Go ahead and plug that in and plug our message into message here. I've realized that is pointless. So let's just plug message into there and get rid of the local variable. Now, this needs a target. If you compile it, it's gonna give an error. So we need to set our OSC client as the target, like so. So that will be what we send the OSC to. I guess in that case, the naming scheme makes a bit more sense. Alrighty, so this is our little blueprint that is going to send back out the messages into the world. Now, I don't need to do anything else in the event graph here with that function can just exist as is. I'm gonna compile it and save it. And we're gonna jump over to our camera offset blueprint, which is where I'll be sort of giving this example out. So again, I'm gonna start by making a bit of room. So move, them, move some things down a bit. What I need to do is at the end of the update rotation one here. So I'm gonna move that up, there we go. So at the end of the update rotation, what I'm going to do is then send its rotation to our little box here. So we can see the new rotation. 
So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with an event begin play. Event begin, whoops, play. So I need to get a reference to our OSC blueprint receiver. We don't actually ever find it. So I need to grab it so I can call the function inside it. So I'm gonna get all actors. This time I'm going to get one of all class. Now the class I'm going to put is BP underscore OSC receiver. There it is. Now there should only ever be one in the world. So I'm going to grab a copy of the first one and promote that to a variable. I'm gonna call this one our OSC master. Why not? Probably what it should have been called in the first place. Plug that into this set like so, compile and save it. So we're gonna get a reference of that. That means then I can drag a copy out here and then I can search for the function we made, which is called, here it is, send OSC message. So if I search for that, send OSC message, there it is. We have our address and our value. So I'm gonna connect that to the end of our rotation here. Now, the last thing is we need to provide an address and a value. So the address, remember we just added, let's double check here, but remember the address we said was just the encoder one underscore value. So this encoder underscore value, which should be really easy. That means we can simply grab our rotation address here, like so, and then search for an append node and then add slash value to it. So you're seeing why I did that now, it makes life a lot easier. So I'm gonna keep this neat and tidy like so. Lastly, for our value, I'm just going to use this get active rotation, which is gonna get the rotation again. So go ahead and copy it and plug it in here. We want the your value like so. Compile and save. And now we're done. So every time we use the encoder here to update the rotation, what we're going to then be doing is updating the rotation. Then we're going to be grabbing the new rotation with this node, sending it to our little value text box there using the address plus value. Now that OSC message is in he here, which is this function here. So that will then add the address, create a message, add the address to the message, add the float to the message and send the message. So not a huge amount of nodes. Hopefully that makes sense. I mean, all we need to do is add these one, two, three, four, five things to get this to work in our current blueprint. So really not that much in the grand scheme of things. So let's give it a test. Here we go. I'm gonna close that, didn't mean to have that open. I'm gonna save my session just to, to make sure. I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. Now it'll be blank to start with, that's because we haven't sent any value yet. But I go ahead and grab the encoder. Look at that, so negative 90, or I spin it the other way to positive 90. Awesome. Now, one thing it doesn't have is I can't type a value in that. I can't type zero and it'll do anything. We haven't set that up yet. So let's do that now. So in the camera offset, what I need to do is I need to create a new event essentially to trigger this because at the moment we're taking a message and adding the value here to set the rotation. So I can't do that for this, because if I type negative 90 in here, what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna take the current rotation and add negative 90 to it. Doesn't really help to give us an accurate input method. So instead, I'm gonna have to create yet another, <laughs> annoyingly, another branch and another custom event. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this custom, a new custom event, I'm gonna call this one update exact rotation like so. On our branches here, I'm going to bring this down a bit and I'm going to make a new one between these two, branch, like so. Now for the full path, I'm going to grab, whoops, an equals exactly string, which we then plug into this branch, whoops. Now for the equals, what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually just gonna duplicate this append node like so 
plug the address into there and plug this into here. Again, you can see why simply adding value to the end of the existing address makes life easy. Now on the, oh, that's supposed to be plugged into false. On the true, I'm going to get the exact set update exact rotation. Now under update exact rotation, we're going to get the floats again. So I'm simply going to copy that from over here plug that in. Now, instead of all this add nonsense, what I can do is I can copy the set actor rotation here and I can simply set the Z exactly. Because if we type negative 90, we want it to be negative 90. So pretty simple setup as well. So we double, we check if it's not updating rotation the normal way, then we check, is it updating rotation by typing the value? If it is, we're going to trigger this event. We're going to grab the float, which we typed in say 180, and then we're simply gonna set the rotation as that. So that would be 180. So now if I hit play, and in our OSC, we type in here, let's say 180 and then hit enter, spins around. Type in 90, spins to the left, and then I can use this encoder still to spin it around if there wasn't an exact amount one way or another they wanted to move instead. Spin around, spin around, spin around, or you know, let's do negative 40. Oh, whoops, negative 40. There we go. So you need to start thinking a bit smarter for this system because we've just doubled the amount of inputs we have. So our blueprints have just gotten more complicated, but it's the same principle, but for all of them. Okay, so I've gone ahead and added the X and Y components. I've also cleaned up the blueprint a bit here. I've switched our checks to functions. These simply contain our branches just to keep things nice and neat. I've also added some comments to the notes. Just if you go ahead and download this on Gumroad or grab the project yourself, you can figure out what each thing does. But essentially what we do for the movement to send the value is I check that it's actually moving. That way we're not sending it constantly on every tick. Then we simply get the location and send it much like we did with the X and Y, and that's called at the end of our event tick here. There it is. Then to move it individually, I'm simply grabbing the message contents, adding it to the set actor location. I'm also going to get actor location here just so we can not overwrite the other values with zero so we don't have things snapping and we can only move one axis at a time. Pretty simple like that. Again, if you want to go have a look at this for yourself, go ahead and grab it on Gumroad. Otherwise, try and pause the video and figure it out for yourself if you need to. But just like that, I can go ahead and hit play, go ahead and open up here, and then I can move our blueprint around. I'll even open it here so you can compare the values. So negative 209, negative... Just like that, we now have these values being sent back to OSC. So we can manually type them in, set it to zero, maybe set this to zero, it's gonna jump way back over there. And let's set that to zero as well. Awesome, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this was informative, helping you build up your OSC controller. I have a couple more things I wanna cover sequencer and then as well as controlling cameras and hyperdex like um, recorders using osc it's really cool so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you later